Chris Nash, Tree Walker, and the Order is standing up in Raven Temple of the Ice Wicked. This is take number two on doing this video. Uh, the last video that I shot of this, I was in the temple area, and my camera only records 23 minutes and 59 seconds of video before it shuts down. So, with our stimulus checks that will be coming around, I'm going to get a camcorder that will shoot a lot longer time uh, away from my computer um, because yeah this the last video would have, was easily oh gosh at least 30 minutes or more so but we're still going to give that to you and today we are here for the very first installment of Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft and we're going to go through this course in one year and what that's going to entail is we are going to Go through the book, uh, give you the lessons that are inside of it, and hopefully enhance your learning of the craft, learning about the traditions, learning about what it is to be a witch. Um, we are going to give you demonstrations, we're going to give you examples, and at the end of each uh, chapter and lesson, there are questions, and I highly recommend that you get a copy. Get your copy out if you have one and um, follow along. Um, and if you uh, like to know where to get it, you can get it on Amazon. Most booksellers, um, you can get the, the, there's newer versions, there's newer uh, printings that have come out. You can get it on Kindle. And I also believe that there's an audiobook. Um, we're going to go through this. We're going to try to go through this through here. It's a 14 lesson thing, so we may take one particular month, and this is going to be one time a month. We're not going to do a whole bunch at once. We're going to do these once a month. It's currently March, so next month we'll do uh, uh, lesson two. Today's lesson is on the philosophy and background of witchcraft and an introduction. Um, I am Reverend Samantha Tree Walker of the Order Standing Oak, like I say, of that and Raven Temple of CX Wicked Witchcraft. And I've been involved in witchcraft and ceremonial magic and druidry since 1992-1993. So I've been involved in this for a long time. And what I will say is I am very... I like to explore, I like to see what's new, what I can learn all the time. But even then, from this book, we can say that there is a lot. And I need a lot to learn. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to read everything out of these chapters because it would just take forever. And I want to give you my own take, give you the bullet points and things about the the, uh, the things that Dr. Buckland is saying. Um, also, uh, we will have a series uh, called The Mysteries of Siak Wicca, which is the uh, tradition that he created in 1974 from his seminal writing, The Tree, a book of sacks of witchcraft. And also, uh, down in the description, I will link a video to an interview I had with Dr. Buckland talking about witchcraft, how he brought it to the United States in 1963, um, the tree, and just all these different things. It was my honor to really just be able to speak with the man who's brought so much learning about the craft to so many people around the United States and the world. So we're going to give you the introduction, and we'll get into the uh, lesson. And this will be something that I will read out. And there might be a couple things that I read uh, and what and in the general thing, but I at least wanted to give you his introduction so that we could properly pay homage and <clears throat> go forward in uh, you know just uh, taking this this first step, this first uh, class on uh, Buckland's Big Blue. And the introduction reads: Witchcraft is not merely legendary. It was and it is real. It is not extinct, it is alive and prospering. Since the last laws against witchcraft were repealed, as recently as the 1950s, witches have been able to come out into the open and show themselves for what they are. And what are they? They are intelligent, community conscious, thoughtful men and women of today. Witchcraft is not a step backwards, a retreat into a more superstition filled time. Far from it, it is a step forward. Witchcraft is a religion far more relevant to the times the vast majority of the established churches. It is the acceptance of personal and social uh, responsibility. It is an acknowledgement of a holistic universe 
and a means towards a raising of consciousness. Equal rights, feminism, ecology, attunement, brotherly and sisterly love, planetary care, these are all part and parcel of witchcraft, the old yet new religion. The above is certainly not what uh, the average person thinks of its relation to witchcraft, no. The misconceptions are deeply ingrained from centuries of propaganda. How and why these misconceptions came about will be examined later. With the spreading news of witchcraft, what it is, its relevance in the world today, comes the seeker. It is here, uh, in this alternative to the conventional religions, this modern, forward-looking approach to life, known as witchcraft, then how does one become a part of it? There, for many, is the snag. General information on the old religion, valid information from the witches themselves, is available, but entry into the order is not. The vast majority of covenants groups of witches, are still wary enough that they do not throw open their doors and welcome all and sundry. They are happy to straighten the misconceptions, but they do not proselytize. This leaves many would-be witches out of self-frustration to simply declare themselves witches and start their own practices. In doing so, they draw on any and oftentimes all available sources. The danger here is that they do not know what is valid and relevant and what is not. Unfortunately, there are now many such covens, operating with large chunks of ceremonial magic, happily mixed in with smatterings of Satanism, and odds and ends of voodoo together with Amerindian lore. Witchcraft is a very loose religion in terms of ritual practices, but it does have certain basic tenets and their established ritual patterns to be adhered to. The purpose of this book is to give the necessary information with it, you, as an individual or like you know, like-minded friends as a group, can then either do your own thing happy in the knowledge that is at least as valid as, as any of the more established traditions, or you can, on locating Coven, become an initiated participant with training and knowledge as good as if not better than any of the other Coven members. In Christianity, there are more denominations. Uh, Episcopalian, Roman Catholic, Baptist, Methodist. So it is in witchcraft. Just as there is no one religion that is right for all people, there is no one denomination of witchcraft that is right for all witches. And that is as it should be. We are all different. Our backgrounds, both ethnic and social, vary greatly. It has often been said that there are many paths, but they all lead to the center. With so many paths, then you have to be able to find the right one for you. Uh, the, the one path you can travel comfortably and securely. Um, to be the most of you, the information I give in this book, the training you will get, is non-denominational. I take examples from traditions such as Gardnerian, uh, Saxon, Alexandrian, and Scottish, giving you both general information and specifics. This is de uh, drawn from more than 20 years of active participation in the craft and nearly twice that in the occult generally. By the time you have finished this training, presuming that you take it seriously, you will be the equivalent of the third degree in Gardnerian or similar. For there, from there, as, as you can then, as I have said, go on to other, perhaps more specific training if you wish, in the sense of being tailored to a particular tradition. But from this present work, you can um, get all the basics and build from the ex excellent foundation. This is a workbook. And speaking of this being a workbook, what we're going to do is at the end of this uh, chapter, every chapter that we do, we're going to take time to go through the questions. And what I would challenge you to do is to uh, listen to the questions as I ask them and give me your answers in the comments below. I would love to see that. I think that would be so cool to see what your take is on the things and, uh, you know, just see what people are really getting out of the course. Um, this is a work, but it's something you must work through. Consequently, on other than chapters, I have divided them into lessons. At the end of each lesson, you will find workbook exercises. At the end of the book in Appendix B, you will find examination questions for each lesson. Read through each lesson. Read and absorb. Read through it two or three times if necessary. Go back and pay special attention to anything you have not easily absorbed. When you are finally happy with what you have learned, uh, answer the uh, questions. Answer them in your own words without referring back to the text. So this way you can see what is sunk in and what is not. Do not go on 
to the next lesson until you're completely happy with the previous one. Answers to the questions are to be found in Appendix C. Now, saying that, if you have a copy of Big Blue, don't go to the back of the book and, you know, cheat and look for the answer there. Put your answers, put your heart into it, what you think the craft is about, and, yeah, you can get uh, uh, a lot more out of it, you know, than just, you know, doing it that way. This book has been carefully put together in a specific order. Don't jump ahead, which we're not. We're going to take this bit by bit all the way through. Um, to the more exciting lessons. You may well find that you don't have the necessary basics for them. When you have carefully worked through the entire book, there will be time to go back and dip into it as a refresher. This book is based on a very successful CX Wicca seminary course that was enjoyed by over a thousand students worldwide. From the experience, I know that the formula works and works well. I would hasten to add that while based on the course, this present work is not the same course. Uh, the CX Wicca course was designed specifically for the Saxon tradition. This is not. There is some duplication of the more general craft material, yes, but not enough to uh, that a, a prior student of the seminary course could not also enjoy this book. So, if you are a serious student of witchcraft or Wicca, either as a would-be practitioner or as one purely academically interested, then I welcome you. I hope you get as much out of this material as did my previous students. Bright blessings, Raymond Buckland, San Diego, California. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what this is about. Let me adjust this just a hair. All right. Um, Dealing with the philosophy and the backgrounds of the craft, we kind of have to go back to ancient times. And in the ancient times, we looked at the idea of the cavemen, and the cavemen, they were the ones who started it with the idea that everything happens for a reason. And those reasons are the sky gods. The sky gods give us rain. The sun gods give us the extreme heat in the summer. Um, all these different things, and then on the idea of staying alive and surviving and letting the tribes grow, and so on and so forth. They had to hunt, and before every hunt, they would uh, dance around the fire, and the shaman would be dressed uh, in, in, in the deer skins, and the rest of the men would sympathetically poke at it with their, with their spears, showing that they were going to have a successful hunt. And they would go out and they would get the food to, that they needed to survive. <clears throat> and then we moved into the uh, agrarian period where we needed, our, our, our needs were growing. We were, our, our, our humanity was getting larger. We needed more clothes. We needed more roofs over our head. We needed more things. There was more people to feed. And sometimes the hunting just didn't do the job. So we had to grow food. We had to grow plants and grains and and these things, and as we did so, we started to put names to our gods, such as uh, the Greek gods and uh, the gods of the underworld, and all these different things. And also, while the agrarian period was starting to come along, we were becoming more in tune with the cycles of the earth. Uh, the idea that we were uh, always needing to focus on fertility, uh, the idea of the male and the female needed to procreate and bring forth life to the tribes and the people and the cities and the societies and these kinds of things. And so the idea of paganism and witchcraft began to evolve, uh, you know, for, for what it was. And so we go from the, from the agrarian societies to we have all of this development over time, the different pantheons and things, and eventually we come to the Middle Ages, and this is where we kind of hit a snag. During the time of the uh, you know human upbringing and, and coming into the world, we started to have to deal with the ideas of the monotheistic, monogenetic traditions, such as Christianity and things. And this is where we come into the problem where we had to deal with the Crusades, uh, the Inquisition, and things like that, where people were not allowed to be who they were, simple pagan people that were in touch with the cycles of life and the rhythms of the earth 
and things like that. You had these people that were doing horrible things. Uh, they were writing books. Springer and, and, and Kramer wrote The Manliest Mouth for Karam, which was a book for witch hunters. Uh, they would hunt, supposedly, witches uh, down because they were evil. You know, women were considered evil because Eve ate the apple and all these things. So it was a very dark time. So a lot of these pagan practices uh, had to be veiled, had to be hidden, had to be changed. And so it became an idea of, uh, you know, survival. Uh, even, you know, in the world, there were places like Germany where villages, whole villages were burned and all these things because of the, the stupidity of this, this idea that witchcraft, that paganism was evil. It wasn't evil. It was just us doing what we've done since the beginning of time, following the seasons and, and you know, doing what we do. And it even got to the point where uh, in Ireland, St. Patrick comes over and he gives the axiom that, oh, well, I chased the snakes out of Ireland. There are no snakes in Ireland. That was a, a poetic way of calling snakes pagans, that he had drove the pagans out of Ireland. You know, because of the idea that, you know, if there was a droidic site that was sacred, they would just rechristen it to uh, a, a, a Catholic uh, 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 deity, spirit, angel, god, whatever. And they'd say, okay, well, you know, now as long as they're Catholic and stuff, you know, they can do whatever they want. <coughs> Excuse me. So we had to deal with this through all of this time, okay, even, you know, even in the United States with Salem and things like that, as we, you know, got out of the, the medieval period and moved into colonial times and things like that, uh, you know, in Salem specifically, uh, 19 were killed, uh, uh, 18 were hanged, and one was pressed to death, all because of stupidity, people who were fearful of anything that was different, that they, that they thought was against their God, and um, so it's like, with us knowing that we were just following the cycles of time um, and fertility over the year, this uh, spring, it's time to put the plants into the ground, uh, to be, uh, you know, productive in building and doing these things. Summer, once again, letting these crops grow and doing the things that we need to do because eventually we're going to be moving into the colder months. And you come into the fall, and the fall is the time where pagans would come in, and they would harvest their crops, they would slaughter the animals, they would put up the foods that they needed to put up, and grains and things, for the long, cold winter. And during the winter is the time where the lore was constructed about the tribes, and the gods, and all these things that would uh, uh, reflect on, on the, the tight-knit, societies that people were um, fostering and it just all goes in a circle that whole connectedness that's why we're pagan that's why we're witches that's why we do what we do um, and then you start to move into the modern realm uh, we come into the the area of when Dr. Buckland um, was in England he knew Gerald Gardner uh, he was initiated by Patricia Crowther, which was an initiate of Gerald, Gerald Gardner. Um, Dr. Buckland met and worked with uh, Gerald Gardner. Uh, Gerald Gardner wrote the book High Magic's Aid um, in 1949. Um, and Wicca was born. And Wicca was born in, to, the, to a degree, the Wicca that we know, because there's always been witchcraft, you know, the, the idea of doing things, the magic and things like that that are sympathetic, that work with our pagan beliefs, that were before what Gardner had put out. But anyway, in 1951 was the repeal of the Witchcraft Act, and here's where everything kind of come together, is that once that happened, Gardner was of the idea, it's like, okay, uh, we can really start to put this out, and he did. He went on British TV and some of these other things, and one of the first books that I ever read was uh, Civil Leaks, uh, Diary of a Witch, um, and number two was Big Blue, and then number three, which I have in my uh, library in the temple room, is High Magic Tate, which he wrote in 1949. Uh, 
basically what the uh, Witchcraft Act was, was this is, it was against the law to be, do anything associated with witchcraft. It was replaced by the Fraudulent Mediums Act, and what the Fraudulent Mediums Act was, was that anybody that performed any kind of divination, seance, any of this kind of thing, and they charge money, they considered that fraud. Okay, so um, that's one of the things why one of the ordains from uh, Gardner and Crafts, specifically coming from Gardner himself, was thou shalt not charge for the art. And the reason why you don't charge for the art is because that is putting an onus on, well, that's the, that the only way you're going to get my help for whatever reason is you have to give, you have to give me money. It should be an exchange of energy. It should be voluntary. Okay? And the other thing is the gardener was trying to be very protective of his people because, you know, if they were doing these things and they were charging for it, he didn't want them getting arrested. Okay? So that's a very practical situation of that. And then in that time, in 1963, in New York, uh, uh, Dr. Buckland came to the United States and set up one of the earliest uh, uh, Gardnerian covens. Now, not to say that there wasn't witchcraft already in the United States, because there actually was witchcraft. Folk practices and things that were brought by everybody that came from every place all over the world. But as far as the witchcraft that we envision now, uh, there were places, especially on the West Coast, uh, Victor Anderson with his uh, fairy faith, uh, which gave us Starhawk and William Penderwin and others, uh, was already here, but it wasn't being pushed out into the, you know, out into America or anything like that. It was, you know, that's what that was. But the main thing with Gardnerian was brought in by Dr. Bucklands, and also in 1974, he wrote, he had written, <clears throat> excuse me, his seminal book. The Tree, a Saxon Book of Witchcraft, which uh, I just, I'm just really glad that we were able to get the Raven Temple set up here because I think it's one of the um, best traditions that are, you know, that are uh, craft oriented, that are easy for people to get into, and it's just like, it's something that I'm very glad that we were able to start here. So you've got Dr. Buckland here, he's doing everything that he can. And he sees that, uh, you know, that America is, is ready for it in certain ways. So he figures, well, okay, um, and this is coming from his mouth in the interview that I did with him, that, you know, it, eventually you've got to, uh, you've got all these things, ideas in your head, and you get so many questions from people that you kind of have to take a minute and go, well, what am I going to do? I've got so many people asking me these questions. So he started writing books. Uh, even way before he wrote Big Blue, he wrote hundreds of books on, not on, well, probably a couple hundred books on magic and divination and different things like that. And the reason why he did it was because that way he could give people the answers that they sought. And uh, then eventually he wrote Big Blue, the book that we're studying today. And, um, you know, the craft community started to grow in the early 70s. And so on and so forth, and it came to the point where, um, you know, we needed to, uh, you know, uh, establish what our thoughts are. And one of our main thoughts was the one that everybody knows, is the biggest one that everybody knows, and harm none, do what thou wilt, which is the witch's read, the wicked read. Do what you will, but don't do what you would have uh, uh, somebody else do to you. Unless, you know, it's like the golden rule. Don't hurt people. You know, put out what you want to get back. Um, and, you know, so, in it hard none, do what they will. Then, in April 1974, the Council of American Witches adopted a set of principles of Wiccan belief, um, which Dr. Buckland subscribed to, and um, we're going to kind of just go over some of them now. Number one, we practice these rites to attune ourselves with the natural rhythm of life forces marked by the phases of the moon, and the seasonal quarters and cross quarters. We recognize that our intelligence, this is number two, we recognize that our intelligence gives us a unique responsibility toward our environment. We seek to live in harmony with nature, an ecological balance offering fulfillment to life and consciousness within an evolutionary, an evolutionary concept. We acknowledge depth of power far greater than that apparent to the average person. Because of this, it is far greater than the, the ordinary it is sometimes called supernatural. 
but we see it as lying within that which is naturally potential to all. Number four, we concern we con uh, conceive of the creative power of the universe as manifesting through polarity, as masculine and feminine. And this same creative power lies in all people and functions to the interaction of the masculine and feminine. We value neither above the other, knowing each to be supportive of the other. We value sex as pleasure, as a symbol and embodiment of life, and as one of the sources of energy used in magical practice and religious, religious worship. Number five, we recognize both outer worlds and inner or psychological worlds, sometimes known as the spiritual world, the collective conscious, unconscious, the inner planes, and etc. And we see the interaction of these two dimensions are the basis for paranormal phenomena and magical exercises. We neglect neither dimension for the other, seeing both as necessary for our, for our fulfillment. We do not recognize any authoritarian hierarchy, but do honor those who teach, respect those who share their greater knowledge and wisdom, and acknowledge those who have uh, courageously given of themselves in leadership. We see religion, magic, and wisdom in living as being uh, united in the way one views the world and lives within it, a worldview and philosophy of life which we identify as witchcraft, the Wiccan way. Um, number eight, calling oneself witch does not make a witch, but neither does heredity itself nor the collecting of titles, degrees, and initiations. A witch seeks to control the forces within her or himself that make life possible in order to live wisely and well without harm to others and in harmony with nature. We believe, number nine, we believe in the affirmation and fulfillment of life and a continuation of evolution and development of consciousness giving meaning to the universe. We know in our personal role within it. Number ten, our only animosity towards Christianity uh, or towards any religion or philosophy of life is to the extent that its institutions have claimed to be the only way. And we have sought to deny freedom to others, and, and have, those that have denied sought to deny freedom to others and to suppress other ways of religious practice and belief. Number 11. As American witches, we are not threatened by the debates on the history of the craft, the origins of various terms, the legitimacy of various aspects of all traditions. We are concerned with our present and our future. Number 12. We do not accept the concept of absolute evil, nor do we worship any entity known as Satan or the devil, or as defined by Christian tradition. We do not seek power through the suffering of others, nor accept that personal benefit can be derived only by denial to another. And number 13. We believe that we should seek within nature that which is contributory to our health and well-being. And to kind of round it out, we also are, we know that we are the ones that have the power. Um, we know that if we use our power wisely, the magical power that we work with, the seasons, the earth, the earth's energies and things like that, if we use them wisely, then we are going to benefit. Okay, and by doing that we do spells and rituals and charms and incantations and things. And these are mostly ge uh, ge uh, geared towards solitary people. Um, but there are also charms and things that are coven related that you will learn if you are a person that ever becomes uh, a part of that type of situation. So having said that, that is pretty much the first lesson of Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft going through this in a year, and here are the questions that I would love for you guys to put your, your answers, your thoughts, down in the comments for me. First question is, it is often helpful to examine our feelings and attitudes towards a philosophy or topic we are interested in. What is your understanding or feeling of witchcraft? Examine your impression, pre preconceptions, biases, etc. How have your reactions changed regarding witchcraft throughout your life? To be honest, when I was a kid, I did think it was devil worship and all these other things. But once I found it, I realized that, you know, from what I've been told, it's not like that. There is a whole different world out there. And to be honest, I have been pagan and a witch 
and a druid and a ceremonialist much longer than I was ever a Christian because this is where I found truth. The truth for me. They say the truth is subjective. This is what is subjective to me. The second question. There are many different denominations of witchcraft, information of which is found in this book in Appendix A. Based on what you know at this point, which denomination do you think you'd like to practice and why? Oh, excuse me. If you know, think of time get some money. And finally, the last question is, the earliest conceptions of primitive magic dealt with sympathetic magic, like I talked about the shaman and, and going on the hunt and things. How can sympathetic magic help you today? In what ways can you foresee using it? List some positive uh, uh, ways and possibilities that you can use uh, sympathetic magic. And it can be about health, um, uh, relationships, uh, you know, healing your, just anything. What are the things that you think are going to be possible uh, for using sympathetic magic? And that is the very first lesson. We're, we're so glad that we got this one uh, out of the way because then we get to move on to the next. We're going to be doing these one a month. This is March. We'll be coming in in April. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put uh, the interview with Dr. Buckland, the video that I have of the interview well, with Dr. Buckland, I'm going to put that down in the description. Um, also, if you're new, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, pass this on to your friends, colleagues, and stuff as we're going to continue with this, with this course. And also, we have a 400 subscriber giveaway. And what that is, as soon as this channel, A Pagan Perspective here on YouTube, reaches 400 subscribers, we're going to give away some books. And one of the first books that we're going to give away is The Book of Spells by Nicole DePolford. So yes, this book right here is going to be given to a subscriber. And then the second book in this giveaway is Witch's Bible, The Complete Witch's Handbook by Janet and Stuart Farrar. This book is basically a reimagining of the Alexandrian uh, Book of Shadows because Janet Farrar was initiated by uh, Alexanders. So those two books are going to be out there for some some random subscriber to the channel once we hit that 400 subscriber mark and to uh, uh, enter to win I'm going to post a link to the video that I very first did to start this uh, uh, giveaway, which was about a week ago. And what you need to do on that video is, uh, well, you subscribe to the channel first off, but on that video, just leave a comment to say, I saw the video, the, 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 the Buckland's class, and I was sent over here to uh, leave a post to say hi, or I liked the video, or whatever, and, and be subscribed and you will be in the drawing, random drawing, to win. Now, if you do not put your, uh, if your subscription does not show, if it's ghosted or hidden, you won't be eligible to win because YouTube does not re, does not show ghosted subscription, meaning that your, your subscription is not made public. So if you want to win, your subscriptions have got to be public so I can see who you are. <coughs> oh, excuse me, and we are going to as soon as that as the very day that we get 400 subs, I'm going to make a video and we're going to do the random draw and we're going to get those books out to you and also, we got some other things coming up. We're going to be doing a series on uh, the Mysteries of CX Wicca. For Druid School, we're going to be doing Lesson 11, Part 1, which is the Seer's uh, Path. We've got Bards, Ovates, and Druids. Well, the Ovates are the Ovate Seers, and we've got the first installment of that. We're going to give you uh, the history of what the Ovate Seers were to Druids. And then the second part of that is we're going to do practical applications, real workings that deal with Seership. We're going to have that going on. Um, and we've got just so many things. And I'm going to put links to my blogs, and we're going to put links to the Raven Temple, which I would love for you guys to come and be a part of. If you're in the Springfield, Missouri area, come. We're going to be doing ritual as soon as we can get some safety from COVID. Anybody that's in Missouri, 
I uh, invite you to come, and we're going to do some things as soon as COVID's a little bit more knocked down. Also, we have Missouri Druid School, which I'll put the links for for that. So we've got a lot of things that are going to be coming up. This is the first installment of this. I encourage you to go out and get a copy of Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft and join me on the next uh, installment. We'll be doing this again in April. So hopefully this video will work. This is the second time. Second time's a charm. Should be a charm. And I'm Reverend Spanish Tree Walker, the Order Standing Up, and Raven uh, Temple of CX Wicca saying have a blessed weekend and see you in the next video.